<laughs> having a little bit of trouble with the audio um, at the beginning of this stream, apparently. But welcome in, everybody. Let me just pull up my live dashboard here. Welcome, welcome. Alrighty. So yeah, um, I'm gonna basically be starting off this stream with uh, just myself playing one of my favorite games. Um, this time it'll be Trials Evolution Gold Edition on the PC. So let me just switch the scene here so you guys can see me. Hello! <laughs> So, yes, welcome to the stream, everybody. Um, I'm going to be doing it a little bit differently from the past few uh, weeks. Effective, or basically, what my plan is, is to play some games and mix that up with a bit of coding here or there. Um, and if I do end up having enough chat members or people actively participating in chat during the stream, also maybe do like a just hanging out section where I just talk with people in chat. So yeah, welcome to the Isomorphic stream. I'm Isabel and let's have a good time. So I do have the game pulled up here. Let me just um, lower the music here. There we go. And you should be able to hear the game now. Well, once it actually starts doing something audio-wise. <laughs> but yeah, um, also, if I uh, change up how I'm sitting in the chair here, you can see my hair is getting quite a bit longer. So that's, that's a plus. <laughs> we were talking a little bit in the Discord about that. All right, so um, I am going to set the music to 20% here. Perfect. All right, now let's just go ahead and hang out for a bit and play this game. Um, I am getting some lag though that I'm noticing, so I'm going to try and fix that up real quick already so I actually <laughs> have all of these a hundred percent completed I I believe I have platinum medals in all of the tracks as well yes I do Oh my goodness, that is absolute insanity. I can't believe the amount of hours I've spent on this game. But yeah, I suppose I will start off with a few of the hard tracks and then move on to um, the extreme ones. So I remember this physics factory being an especially difficult one. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about the rider's exclamations. That's so great. But yeah, it's probably been at least a couple years since I've popped this game open. And, and you can see my old Steam username there as well. Ah! <laughs> oh goodness. I wasn't prepared for that. Okay. Whee! <laughs> okay, just getting my bearings here. Ah! Here. It doesn't seem like... Did the music... Okay, so apparently I didn't save the music preferences, so... 
Actually, why don't I just keep the stream music going? Because I vibe with that better, honestly. And I will just increase the resolution just slightly. There we go. Perfect. Alrighty. Okay, once I kind of get a feel for this game again, I'm gonna try this track over again. Woohoo! Alright, that wasn't bad. Let's restart it now. Shoot. <laughs> okay. There we go. Nice. But yeah, when I was younger, like probably 14, 15 years old, I would play the absolute heck out of this game. As evidenced by me completing all of the tracks with a platinum medal which is like the most difficult achievement in the game ah! okay there we go My goal is to complete this track with at least, or with at most five faults before I move on to some coding, probably. Okay, so what I need to do, I think, is stop on this one. I need to somehow- okay, there we go, perfect. Ooh, that was smooth. Oh, my dog is wanting to get out of the room, hold on. Well, <laughs> that was easy. All right, one second. I have to help my dog. There we go. Alright, so, next one, next track. Just <laughs> adjusting my posture here. Ah! Trying to check Discord at the same time. And that wasn't working well. Woo! <laughs> Almost did the fender hook. I remember always trying to get that trick when I was younger. It's basically when, um, you hook the space between, or yeah, you hook the fender and the wheel on like a flat surface, and then 
you kind of do like this weird trick to um basically roll the bike over that surface Whee! Oh no! <laughs> no! <laughs> I whiffed at the last second. Okay, hold on. There we go. <laughs> All right. I remember being really good at this track. This was one of my favorites, I think. Or one of the ones I played the most, which might have meant it was my least favorite. In terms of getting the records and medals. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Someone has pinged me in Discord. Oh. Tis nobody. Alright, let's do a couple of the extreme tracks real quick and then get into some F sharp coding. There we go. Just trucking along. Alright, I guess cycling along. Ah! I say right when I hit a snag. There we go. Can you believe I completed this track at one point in time with zero faults? That's just crazy to me. Nice. <laughs> Just barely got the finish there.
All right, let's do one more. Man, this song is great. Loving it. Okay, there we go. <laughs> there to the end. Whoa! That was really neat. There we go, perfect. Okay. So I think that's enough of the game. Alrighty. So one second while I'm popping up the code editor. Just popping out the chat here so I can have it on screen. And for anyone who's just coming in, um, hello, I am, my name is Isabel. Um, during this stream, we're basically just going to be coding for a little bit, playing some games in the meantime, just having a good time. So yeah, if that seems like it would interest you, just stick around. Okay. And... There it is. Okay. Here we are. And looks like my audio is still good. And, uh, yes, just a friendly reminder, <laughs> reminder, <laughs> just a friendly reminder, oh my god, I said it again, friendly reminder to subscribe to this channel, if what just happened, me tripping over my words isn't recent enough to do so. <laughs> okay. So, I'm just gonna pop up Project Euler here. 
so that we know what our challenges for the day are. So for those of you who don't know who er, who Euler is, um, he was a mathematician that was very famous for many different contributions to the field. And there's a project named Project Euler, named after him. And it's basically a bunch of math-based coding challenges that I've been working away at uh, using my one of my favorite languages, being that one being F Sharp. And yeah, that's what we'll be doing for the next couple of hours here. Interny. <laughs> Such a goofball. Alright. Yes, friendly reminder. <laughs> okay, so without further ado, let's get started on some coding. I'm doing really good, how about you? Okay, this one will be 11. Whoops, and that needs to be... D I B. There we go. Okay. So let's open that up. Oh dear. It's appeared in the wrong place. Okay. There we go. All right. So the problem is as follows. I'm just going to copy and paste it here. Doing pretty good, just studying. Decided to join to see how the stream was going. Cool. No worries. It's going pretty good so far, I'd say. Okay, so let's go ahead and read this question after putting our header here. Number 11. Okay. So, we're gonna have to fix the formatting of this here, but that's okay. In the 2020 grid below, four numbers along a diagonal line have been marked in red. Okay, so here, why don't I do this instead? I'll just screenshot it for you guys. Or even better, I'll put it in the browser window here. Okay. Here it is, and we'll let this share a good portion of the screen. So then we'll just remove these, or this part at least. Okay. And then remove this one. Ah! <laughs> I'm so good at this. Can't you tell? I'm a professional streamer. Was expecting some of the people here to be like some of the programmers of the TT modding server? <laughs> They don't program as good as me. Thank you, Linterny. I appreciate that. Okay. So, let me just pop up another window here for the chat so I can tab back and forth between that. There we go. Okay. So this is the problem. In the 2020 grid below, four numbers along a diagonal line have been marked in red. These few. The product of these numbers is 26, 63, 78, 14. The product of all those is this. Okay. What is the greatest product of four adjacent numbers in the same direction? Up, down, left, right, or diagonally? Okay, interesting. This is gonna be kind of a doozy, I think. <laughs> so let's break this down. I think first thing I'm gonna do 
is make this a multi-line string. How is Super Patrick going? It's going really well, actually. Um, my dad and I finally made some good progress with... <laughs> yes, I have to multiply all those numbers together. But yeah, we've been making some really good progress with the one of the bigger implementations that we have to do for the app, which is basically to get an authentication s server and flow going so that players can basically uh, register an account on the Chosen Few software site. So that's pretty close to, we're pretty close to having that working completely. And it's been taking us weeks to do this. So it's really exciting to have it finally almost done. And then after that, we can move on to implementing the rest of the features. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And let's just see who else is pinging me. Just responding to someone on Discord. Alright, so let's let grid equal this and <laughs> Yeah, no worries, Lynn Turney. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, oops, wrong copy paste. Let's see where do I have that? Okay. There we go. <laughs> so this is our string. So basically we need to find, I believe, the greatest product of four adjacent numbers. So what I need to do first then is make this into a two-dimensional array, I think. Yeah, so it's not multiplying all of the numbers in the grid, it's multiplying, bas basically finding which of these, um, okay, so let me go back to this example. So it's saying these numbers on the diagonal, 26, 63, 78, and 14, those are all diagonally adjacent, so they're next to each other. And they basically want us to find the greatest product of any four numbers on this grid that are all like in a line up like that. Either diagonally, left to right, or up or down. So that's how I'm interpreting it. Yeah. So, I believe the first order of business then is to... Yes, it is such a good problem. It's very fascinating. So, maybe... I'm trying to think of how to get a handle on this. First of all, I should put these into an array. So, let's let um, grid num equal, and then we'll take grid, pass that to string.split. If that's a method. Oh dear, I don't know if string.split is even a method. Okay, I'm just gonna do some research real quick here. Okay, so I should just be able to use an instance method. So I should be able to do grid that split then pass it a space then sequence dot map yeah it yeah it works just fine in dot net as well so then we just want to map them to integers actually probably 64 bit integers and then let's just print out grid num. Okay. So let's execute that. 
Okay, input string was not in the correct format. Hmm. Let's see here. Actually, let's do it this way. So let's do grid rows equals grid dot split slash n. Yeah, so the problem is I need to get it from text format into numerical format. There we go. So I have my rows. Then let... And I, I think I'll rename this variable up here to grid string. Just for convenience. Okay, so I'm trying to basically get myself a two-dimensional array to work with. So what I'll do, I think, is grid rows. And then pass that to list.map. And let's see what this is complaining about. Oh, okay. And I should have to open system.link for that. Okay, so now that should work. Yes. So then list.map, and then we'll take in a function with a row. And this row will also do string.split. And that will be where we split with the spaces. And that should work. Just trying to figure out what the error is. Hmm. Interesting. I believe there's a from array. Whoops, not form away. Hmm. Let me look this up. <laughs> a lot of research I have to do, oftentimes. So basically I'm trying to convert that array to a list. Ah, okay. So it's of array. There we go. And then pass that to list.ofArray as well. Actually I suppose they don't even need to be lists. Yeah, okay. Then this can be array.map. Maybe. Yeah, okay. That works. All right. So then I should be able to do array.map here and then do int 64. So maybe this will work. Hmm. I wonder why that is. 
F sharp parse integer. Okay. So Yeah, that makes sense, I think. All right. So this is what I need to do, I believe. I need to do function n and then int that parse that should work. Okay. Then we simply do D2. And that should give us what we want. So is there a parse format? Just trying to figure out why that's not working. So let me put this Google search into the window here so you guys can see it. Okay. So, um... Yeah, just accept all cookies, I guess. <laughs> okay. So that's to make an integer to a string. I want to do the opposite. Hmm, okay. So... Let's instead do try parts and okay, that's going to be more complicated to do. Hmm. Oh, okay. So it does, okay, I can do this the way that I want to. Okay. 
Okay, so let's do this. Uh, globalization dot number styles. Let's see. Parse integers with leading zero. Oh, okay. <laughs> That, that makes it so much easier. All right, so this is what I'll do instead. So I'll take string dot trim start, do zero, and then we go ahead and pass that to the integer parsing function. Okay. Oh my goodness, why is that still not working? Hmm. What if I parenthesize this? Still not. Maybe... What if I do this? Okay. So it doesn't like that either. Shouldn't be this hard. What if we do string split options? Remove empty entries. And do the same for this. Okay, so then we'll put this on a different line. Perfect. Okay, so now I believe this should work. Nope. Hmm, okay, so it's because some of them are zeros. So, I suppose we should have something that basically says, okay. I think I know what to do now. Maybe. So the problem is some of these entries are just plain zero. And when I do this trim start, it's giving us empty strings, which we're then passing to the number conversion. But what I need to do is 
detect whether it's a zero. There we go. So we'll indent that now. Perfect. Okay. So then this should also have an indent. Okay. So I believe that all works now. If we put this in parentheses. Hmm, okay. Whoops, I have caps lock on. So that gets rid of that error. And now we can print grid. Hmm. So I believe that got rid of at least one of the problems. So what's the other issue then? So this is what? That's a string. Yes. Yeah, that's really weird. I wonder if I get rid of that. No. Hmm. What if I do it this way? <laughs> oh my god. You've got to be kidding me, that's so stupid. Okay, so I finally have this parsing. Finally. Okay. <laughs> Woo! I did it. That was difficult. Okay, awesome. Pogchamps in chat <laughs> if anyone's there watching. Ah! Okay. That was... That was tough, but we made it through. Okay. So now that we have that going for us, let's go ahead and do a simple loop. Actually, okay, how best to do this? Okay, I have an idea. So, what we need to do is basically Make a recursive function that checks all of... Basically, a recursive function that loops through the grid 
It scans row by row, left to right, and basically what it does is for every single item that it scans, it goes into another version of the function. It basically recurses into itself and goes into, basically checks the adjacent area. Okay. I think I can do that. That shouldn't be too hard. Okay. So. Let's do let scan grid and then we'll take in the grid object. Actually, we don't need to do that. Then we'll do n for area like the search area, so we'll call it search n, and let's get started writing it. So for every n in um, that would be 0, 2, grid dot blank. Okay, do, and then for our do, we'll do this. Okay, oops, perfect. And then what we'll do after this is, we want to search in one direction. So there are three different directions that we can search in from left to right, up and down, and diagonally. So we'll call this x, call this y, and call this d, and we'll do this. So, I guess we'll do search D as well. So then, what we'll do is... We'll probably define another function called let scan recurse. equal this and then we'll do n or d and then n actually we'll have to pass the whole shebang x y d and then n okay so then we'll do this or actually we'll make this multiply recurse Hmm. All right. So next, we'll do if D equals zero, then we'll do And I suppose the number then, we need a product as well. Okay. So for direction zero, let's say direction zero is left to right. So what we'll do then is pass or return p times multiply recurse and then x plus one y. D N minus one Then we'll do this if N equals zero D 
then P. Then we can do else if right here. And then we pass our current product. And I believe that should work. What parameter am I missing? Okay. So then, else if d equals 1, so we'll make the uh, direction 1 be search um, downward. So we'll do y plus 1. And honestly, this should be minus search n. And same here. Okay. So then, l if d equals 2. And let's just indent all of this. And then do else. Then we'll make this x plus 1, y plus 1. And that should do it. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay. So, let's execute that. I don't quite understand why that's giving me trouble. Hmm. Yeah, that's bizarre. Oh, welcome back, Linturney. Um, you haven't missed much. I only just got the uh, strings parsing working. So now I'm working on the actual search and multiplying function. And I'm getting a weird compiler error. So this is what I think I'll do. So if I do this, yeah, so for some reason it's not letting me nest the else if statements.
It's basically saying I can't have an else there. When I should be able to just fine. So here's what I'll do. I'll do this. And then I'll just not nest them, basically. Okay, that's really bizarre. Why don't you omit the else and before the conditionals you put the result that was on the else? I could try that, yeah. Here, why don't we do this? Let's not nest the functions instead, because that might be what's actually bothering it. Oh, okay. So I had these indented too much. Maybe. Just really weird compiler errors all around. Well, the tabbing in F sharp, the indentation actually does matter. Because it's like Python. Hmm. I see. Maybe. So maybe I should be parenthesizing all of these? Yeah, that is really weird. And if I remove this... I wonder if I comment this out... El let está haciendo un equals a todas las condiciones. Um. Oh. Wait a second. I. You might be right. Oh, here. Are you sure?
like that. Yeah, so that gets rid of the error in the let. So then p is that integer. Okay. Unexpected symbol in binding. I just have no clue why it doesn't like the else. Yes, that I think is right now. So put that there, d equals 2, and then Hmm. Why does that think it's a boolean? That's so weird. The final... Hmm, okay. Maybe. I just don't know where the multiplication symbol is getting that error from. Yeah, I know. That it shouldn't be syntactically valid. That makes no sense. Maybe. Okay, I'm gonna look this up. If then F sharp. Okay. The last one the same thing. Oh, okay, hold on. So that needs to be in parentheses, and so does this. Maybe, what if I do this? What if I parenthesize every single other thing? So then that matches that, that matches that, and then we remove this, and this.
I, yeah, I suppose I don't need to do the... Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay. So that seems to be complaining less now. Oh my god! It's finding more yet to complain about. Else one, or one L it should be. Oh goodness, okay. <laughs> so this works now. Okay, finally. <laughs> Man, that was a bitch to deal with, oh my god. Okay, so now we can get back to this finally. Oh yes, and I should then do... <laughs> Maybe I'm trying my luck here, but what I should be doing is... Yeah, I, I'm saving it. So then I should return P else. Okay, so this works then. Finally, now we can uncomment these lines. Okay. So why isn't this right? Yeah, so what I'm trying to do is break the recursion at the end. Because I'm doing n minus 1, n minus 1, n minus 1, calling the function again. And I want it to see when n is 0 so I can stop everything. So. Hold on. Oh, okay. So if n equals zero, then we return the product. Okay, so that does compile. Perfect. I think, yeah. Okay. But then when you declare a function with the equal, the thing inside shouldn't be on a parentheses. So you're saying this, right? Okay. Well, this is what we'll do. So now, we'll do this. So, let's see. So I suppose we'll do let mutable. It has an equals that leads to all the conditions. Yes. So basically what we want to do is to break the recursion when we're done searching down the line. Um, no, it, it shouldn't have to be in parentheses anymore because, um, because it's indented, it, it knows to keep it in that space. So let's let mutable maximum. Yeah, so it's tricky like that, <laughs> but good thinking. 
So let mutable max equal zero L and then we'll do this. So let multiplication recurse x, y, so we'll pass x and y, and also d. For n, we'll pass search n, and then we shouldn't even have to pass search direction. So this gives us, ah yes, then we pass 1l. And then we'll do if max, wait, hold on, let candidate equal this, then if maximum is less than the candidate, then we'll store, uh, I forget how to store a variable in F sharp. Hold on. <laughs> store mutable F sharp. Okay. Yeah, so it's it's this arrow. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> It is quite complicated. Okay, so now all we should have to do is scan the grid four and let it run. So if we do that, um, I'm just not sure why I'm not getting a result now. Let's see. So I'm going to close the notebook and then open it again. There we go. Oh my goodness. No! I thought we were past this. Hold on. Shoot. So what's what's the problem now? Hold on. So now it's saying it's fine. But again, it's not giving a result. Hold on. I might have to restart the code editor. Give me a second. I'm just trying to think of the best way to do this. Okay. Yeah, I'll just restart it. Yeah, so that's what it's supposed to be doing. It's supposed to be returning the uh, result of whatever expression. And it, it usually does. It's just for some reason it wasn't. And I think that was due to a bug with the whole thing. Excuse me. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and open up our chat again. Okay, there we go. <laughs> yeah, it probably did crash. Oh, good, and it's popping up again. Perfect. Okay, so let's put grid here again. Okay, so that's good. Now let's do scan grid, and then four. So that's not giving us anything. 
Oh, right. Okay, that makes sense, actually. Right, because we actually need to return max after that. Okay, so the max is one. So then, that means we're never getting anything greater than one. Which can't be right. <laughs> yes, incredible indeed. Um... Oh, okay. So that's one of the bugs that I needed to fix, but that wasn't the bug. Why don't we redo the damn let function with the conditionals just p? Okay. Good idea. Well, actually, I think it's caused by this. So if I change this... Oh, it's still 1. Hmm. That's odd. Oh, of course. Okay. So what I should be returning is a tuple. Okay, so grid dot x dot y times this. So this is what it should be. Oh, yes, yes, I, I understand what you mean, but I don't think that's the issue. I think the issue is that I'm not actually multiplying by my data. Okay, so th this is more like it. This is more like it. So the question is, does this seem reasonable? Yeah, so we actually got our result now. It seems like. We just need to check it. And I doubt that this is the right answer. If it is, I'm just going to fall out of my chair. Okay, so yeah, that is incorrect. Okay, so I'm not entirely crazy. Let's try this one instead. Hmm. On second thought, that can't be right. Okay. So what if I do 5? Because I think I might be having an off by 1 error. Yeah, no, that's not correct either, so let's keep debugging. Scan grid 1, good idea. So it gives us 99. Okay. So that seems correct. Now let's do scan grid 2. Okay, so we should be back. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think you fell into the river. I'm just having, um technical issues, I think. I need to clean up my SSD, um, 
this week because it, my computer is complaining about storage issues. But yeah, so that seems to be working. So the next one is 90 or er, 9306. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. So why don't we do this? Why don't we take the example that it gave us and see if it calculates that correctly? So that would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 down, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 to the right. Oh yeah. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> Scan grid zero. I don't think that's gonna do anything meaningful. Okay, malt recurse. So it was six and then eight. Then we'll do direction two for the diagonal. N equals four. And then product is one. So let's execute that. Okay. So that does give us the right result. If I go back to the problem, yep, that is correct. Okay. So then our scan grid should actually finally give us the right result then. So it's this same thing it seems, or it seems similar, but I don't think it's the same. Oh, it is exactly the same as the other time. Okay, so that's definitely not it then. Keep the operation of before. Could it be because I'm limiting the search space too much? Oh, sure, okay. Yeah, so that is correct. So what happens if we do, um, one? So that is this. So if we take that specific 26, so this one. So let's do let me pull up a calculator here. So 26 times 95 times 97 times 20. Okay. So that is somehow not giving the right result. Oh, okay. I... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be goofy. Okay, so it's because I'm not multiplying P by this. This is what it should be for all of them. So if I do this... Okay. And then for the last one. Okay. So let's try this again. And this time, it's still inaccurate? Hmm. So, that's so curious, though. Yes. I'm aware of that. 
I'm trying to get it to give the right result for um, basically 26, 95, 97, 20. Hello Terminus, welcome. Just working on a brain busting code issue. <laughs> So if I do the two, I get a right result, but if I do the one, I don't. Hmm. <laughs> You dropped your iPad on your ankle. Sheesh. Okay, so let's do divided by 20. Hmm. So what if I do 5? And then make this one. And if I do three, that is very bizarre. Wait a second, okay. So, what I wanna do is return one for this. I'm doing this backwards, I think. Yeah, I don't even need this key result here. Cause what I can do is just this. And then just ignore this parameter entirely. <laughs> that putting random numbers never works. Yeah. That's pretty much the gist of coding. Oh yeah, then I just don't need to even need to put a 1 there. And then, not even a one over there. What the frick? <laughs> that is so weird. Hmm. So... Why would this be? Oh. You know what? I have the fucking <laughs> coordinates reversed. Oh my god. Why do I do these things to myself? Okay, so that is still not correct. But I do know it should be that. Okay. And then this should be X. This should be Y. And then this should be 8. This should be 6. Okay. <laughs> now, now. Now it's getting us the right results. Okay. So now that everything is talking the same language. So I'm going to comment this out. And it's still that. Why is it still that? Why is it still that? What? <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> hmm. Yes, that is fascinating.
Perhaps it is, yes. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Although, if we do n search n plus 1... Okay, so that goes outside of the array. And what about minus 1? Still gives us the same result. What about this one? Oh, perhaps. Oh, right. This- yeah, okay. Yeah, that does make sense. So that should be just yx, without multiplying anything. Okay, so now if I do n minus 1, n minus 1. Okay, perfect. We're finally getting a different result now. So if we submit this, that's still incorrect. <laughs> okay, so, hmm. Let's do this instead. Yeah, bruh. <laughs> Oh my god. So if I do n equals 1, I get that. If I do this, I get index out of range. So the greater than, basically what D is supposed to represent is the direction that I'm searching in. So that shouldn't be an issue. Unless... Hmm. Okay. So... I think the problem might be a little more complicated than what it initially seems to be. Because what I'm doing is I'm basically searching, okay, I'm searching the space of all the diagonals down and right, but I'm not I'm never searching upwards and I'm never searching to the left and I'm never searching um partially on one side and partially on the other. So what I'm doing right now is I'm basically going, so this is our grid, right? This is our grid. It goes scans left to right like this. And we're basically going, our loop is going like this. It's selecting an entry in the grid and it's either searching down to the right or it's searching diagonally like this. And it's doing this for each of the entries. So it goes from left to right like this. And... The problem is, if we're closer to the center of the grid, like right here, what we should be doing is searching not only left to right, or yeah, left to right, but we should also be searching up and down, left to right from the center, and like this. And even starting maybe like this and like this, you know what I'm saying? So it's a little more spatial than we're making it out to be, and I don't have enough time for today to um implement that properly so i think this is a perfect place to leave the stream for the day thank you everyone who did join in for watching especially linterny and terminus i really appreciate you guys being here with me and yeah i'll see you guys next time Bye bye